Oh yes, of course. I would love to show my students how to trade uh, to suction uh, Maritza Cortez in bed three. Sounds like a plan. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay. Oh, hi there. Um, let me just grab my students. Um, students, you want to come? I uh, one of the staff nurses had asked me to suction. So how about we go ahead and do that first? Great. Okay. All right. So first thing, I want to make sure that I check uh, Maritza's physician orders. So let me just look through here. Physician orders. And it says to trach uh, daily PRN for to maintain that's greater than 93. So we're good to go. Okay. Oh, so the first thing I need to do is make sure I have my supplies, which actually they um, the staff nurse had them ready available at the bedside for me. So I'm going to enter the patient's room. Good morning, Maritza. My name is Donna Vidowski. I'm an instructor with the College of DuPage Practical program and these are my students and my colleague Teresa Busey. Good morning. We were wondering if you wouldn't mind um, if they could watch as I uh, show them how to suction a trach. Not a problem. All right. Okay so the first thing I want to do is um, I'm going to do some hand hygiene. Can you please state your name? Maritza Cortez. Okay and I just want to check your ID band and can you also tell me your date of birth? Uh, June 3rd, 1970. Great, thank you. Okay, so the next thing you would do is put a drape um, so that in case they have copious amounts of phlegm that we, you know, keep their hospital gown protected. Otherwise, you would go ahead and have to change it, so it just saves you a step after you're done suctioning. The other thing I'm going to ask you is do you have any allergies? No. Okay, wonderful. All right, so then I have to um, have my needed supplies. I've got my trach care kit which includes the suction catheter. I need a bottle of peroxide and a bottle of sodium chloride, normal saline. And then I also always bring with me at least two pair of extra sterile gloves in case you uh, somehow break sterile technique when you're putting on your gloves. I have my suction canister and I think I'm ready to go. Uh, Teresa Busey, my colleague, is going to go ahead and start reading me the steps so I know that I go in order so that because if the students test out on the return, we want them to be able to be successful on their first attempt and get that extra five points. <laughs> so at this point, we want to assess the lungs. We're going to auscultate, and then we're also going to monitor the oxygen saturation. Okay. Good baseline. So put this pulse ox on your finger while I'm listening to your lungs. Take a, right a on breath skin, breath. right? We do it on skin. Always, thank you. Take a deep breath for me, please. And another deep breath. Okay. Of course, I'd listen to other long feels, but for all intents and purposes, you would you would do that. I was just showing an example of how we would do that. Um, she has some adventitious breath sounds, so I did, uh, outcomes that I would want uh, following this procedure, the data I would collect, would be um, clear breath sounds and a pulse ox greater than 93. And right now her pulse ox is 90, so we definitely need to suction. Then following that, we would place the towel or the drape, but she's already got the blue pad there, so I, I think that covers it. Then we would open our bottles. Okay, you got that open. And then you're going to don your sterile gloves. Okay. They're right on top, so you need to be careful so you don't touch anything else in the kit. Bravo. Now, keep in mind, during the return, if something falls out, you do have your extra pair of sterile gloves. Right. The priority is maintaining sterility, not that... Um, you hope we don't discover that you contaminated and right. you didn't mention it. Okay. okay, now you've got those on and we're moving to um, opening the sterile drape and setting up your sterile field on your bedside table. Okay, there's a shiny side and a shiny, shiny side will go down. And she's handling that in the middle of the drape. Okay, then we move to arranging the supplies. And then I've got four by fours. 
Okay, so now her, her bins are empty. She won't pick it up to show you, but those are empty and ready to receive the fluid. So at this point, her hands, one will become clean and one will remain sterile. So my, I'm going to keep my non-dominant hand is my clean hand or my non-sterile hand. So I'm going to come around my sterile field and I'm going to pour saline in all three bins. That's right. And then I'm going to pour peroxide in the large bin with the saline. So it makes it half saline mixture, half peroxide mixture. Um, good, so at that point, and now with continuing with your procedure, you're gonna take out the inner cannula. With my non-sterile or clean hand. Right, and now I'm gonna zoom in so they can see what you're doing okay, with this. Okay, so I pinched the phalange. Right, some are twist and some are pinch, but this one's a pinch. And I'm going to take, try to gently take it out. And I'm going to put that in my half strength, half saline mixture. Could you point to that one more? It's the big bin, the big right? Bin the big with bin. The peroxide and the saline mixture. Great. Okay, so now um, you're ready to suction. So what you're going to do is, um, I think you turned on your suction I didn't, previously. But I can turn that on now. Okay. I'm going to turn on my suction to uh, no greater than 120, somewhere between 100, because if it's too low, then you're not going to be effective either. Right. So. I think 80 to 120 is considered medium suction. Okay. So that's good. And then you will um, take my suction tubing. Right. And now with your sterile hand, picking up your sterile suction catheter protecting the part that needs to remain sterile. Right, beautiful. So students, as you see what she has there, she's got her sterile piece in her sterile hand, clean piece over there. Okay, now. Um, I'm going to ask the patient. You're gonna ask, oh, I need to, yeah. prime your tubing a little well, bit? Well, I can ask her to take some deep breaths if I had oxygen okay. there, I would have turned the oxygen up to 100% during suctioning. Otherwise, if it's just room air, I'm going to ask Maritza to take a couple deep breaths while I clear to make sure the, suck, the, the tubing is, the suction is working. Okay, now she's hyper, hyper oxygenated and you've got primed tubing with your fluid there. So, um, you're going to um, apply, oh, insert your catheter. Gently. Gently. And I'm going to insert it until I have met resistance or they start to cough. And then once, when you meet that resistance, you grab, you slow, slow, ever so slowly pull out. And as you're pulling out, then you apply suction and you will apply and release, apply and release. And I will demonstrate that for you. So keep an eye on her thumb of her clean hand it's and the. No the, suction yet. No. I meant resistance. I pull back, I apply suction, and as I apply and release the suction, I'm twisting and removing. Right. And I've done suction. You want to limit your suction to no more than 10 seconds. After I've suctioned, if they've had oxygen, if they had a collar, I put the trach collar back, have them take some deep breaths while I clear the tubing. Keep in mind you want to note the color amount in consistency of the uh, sputum that you just suctioned and I'm going to clear. 